From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Breaking news to report tonight, Fairbanks Judge Paul Lyle has issued an order obtained by the News Center to vacate a hearing that would reportedly free the Fairbanks Four. That's right, details of the agreement were outlined in the four-page filing. The Fairbanks Four are withdrawing their claims of innocence and the state is asserting they're guilty but agreeing to the immediate release of the men. Judge Paul Lyle wrote the court is not disapproving the proposed settlement but he is asking for more legal briefing before the basis of the deal. Lyle says he is, quote, unaware of the legal authority authority the parties are relying upon to vacate the convictions and is holding the settlement in abeyance. Now we will have more details tomorrow. And in other news this evening, the University of Alaska Board of Regents met today at the Fairbanks campus. Due to the recent release of the governor's proposed budget cuts of 15 million for the University of Alaska, the board met to discuss budget planning. Jim Johnson, the University of Alaska's president, shared a contingency budget planning process with challenges, outcomes and guiding principles. He stressed that cuts should be made vertically instead of horizontally, meaning that spotlighted departments should be spared while others get completely dropped. After hearing from several students about successful programs, Johnson spoke. If we simply do prorated cuts and horizontal cuts moving forward, there'll be less and less of those programs and less and less of that positive progress we're making and difference we're making in people's lives and communities. So the purpose here is not simply to cut the budget to cut the budget, but in my view, it's to make sure that we're investing in the things that really create success, that are positive and that grow our university. Local members of the state legislature met with voters last night at the Nolmean Library. The discussion focused on how to solve the state's budget shortfall. Mike Fussell was there and files this report. Just hours after Governor Bill Walker released a proposal to fill the state's $3.5 billion deficit, state legislators met with community members to get their take on the fiscal situation. State Senator Pete Kelly and Representatives Scott Kawasaki and Steve Thompson responded to constituents' questions, drawing from their backgrounds on legislative finance committees. Some testified in support of Walker's proposed income tax, but several opposed it calling for deeper cuts or supplemental sales tax. The next round, which I think we're going to be looking at, our people will feel it more. I don't know, that's, I'm not saying that's good or bad. Uh, I don't think it'll be devastating. And, uh, and they're concerned, and, and they should be, and we're, we're all ears. Other community members spoke up about what they believe should be protected when the budget goes to the chopping block. Kawasaki says he felt people were willing to support government services if they were carried out efficiently. Not building uh, silly roads in neighborhoods that don't need them. Uh, not spending money on things like uh, the Aerospace Development Corporation, which does not have frequent launches. Those types of things need to be cut first. House Finance Committee co-chair Thompson says he is considering consolidating departments, but didn't specify which. Kelly says he's still evaluating the proposal and that action beyond budget cuts will still be needed, but he isn't fully supportive of an income tax. I just don't feel that it's right to turn to the, to the people who don't have state jobs um, and say, this government that's probably too big, uh, we need you to pay more for it. Kawasaki says passing a balanced budget is not going to be an easy task. It's going to take a full, long session uh, as we delve through each of the budget numbers and figure out these are priorities, these are the things we absolutely need, uh, and then these are other things that we want. Kawasaki and Thompson will be responsible in the House as members of the Finance Committee, while Kelly will lead a similar charge in the Senate. Reporting, I'm Mike Fussell. A North Pole man who set up fire that activated most of Interior Alaska's fire services has accepted a plea deal from the state. Thomas Saunders, who was originally charged with arson, pleaded guilty to reduce charges of pollution to land, air and water. Now that is a misdemeanor. He was accused of setting fire to tires near a Durango Trail home after an altercation with his parents. The flames rapidly spread to the heavily wooded area and firefighters were called to contain it. Saunders was also ordered to pay restitution for the costs of fighting the blaze. When we come back, it's a Thursday night, which means another episode of Fairbanks Flavor. Tonight, we'll show you how to make manicotti. Manicotti. And in tonight's segment of Interior Tainment, Monty Bowen tells you about special parties that teach you how to paint. Stay with us. And welcome back. There are questions about longtime workers leaving the city of Fairbanks employ. Ryan Grimes has the story. An implosion of staff at the city. 
One person described it as an exodus. Eight staff members, including department heads and senior employees with the city of Fairbanks, have resigned or retired for various reasons. Mayor John Eberhardt says the main cause is because of high insurance rates that are affecting employee wages. What our employees are paying uh, is very, very high. I, for example, have to pay over $700 a month. Our police officers, I understand some of them are paying over $900 a month. We're having trouble attracting people. We're having trouble keeping people because of the package. Not so much the wages in themselves, but the health care. Executive Director Stephen Guinness from the Fairbanks Native Association implored the council to look at ways to increase wages for its staff. Make them a little more competitive uh, to attract good people in your government here. Several council members say the lack of employee retention is due to other reasons. And I've heard the mayor say it's because of salaries. I'm here to tell you it's not because of salaries. The impression that they're trying to get out there is that we've lost all these individuals and it's salaries and it's not salaries. All eight within a year and a half and every one of them a long-term employee with a very important job with the city, very important job. They can't all leave for more pay. Councilman David Pruse sided with the mayor. Mayor, I agree with your health care costs in regards to not giving the best benefit package, which does not which does not help us enticing great people or retaining people. Councilman Bernard Gatewood stood neutral on the matter. However, he had some choice words for the council. Whether it's money or health care or the, the dreaded word morale, uh, which is highly overrated, I might add, for, for whatever reason, um, I think all of us kind of sharing that in some form or fashion, because it affects us. So it's something that you know, we'll have to take a look at. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. Well, it's time once again to join Lisa Gambardella for another edition of Fairbanks Flavor. Tonight, a special guest is going to help Lisa make some manicotti. Hi, welcome to Gambardella's Pastabella. I'm Lisa Gambardella, and we're downtown at our restaurant, and my sister Allie's here for Fairbanks Flavor. Today we're making manicotti. We're gonna start out with ricotta cheese and add caramelized onions, parsley, salt and pepper, two different kinds of cheese, Asiago and Romano. Okay, and then we're ready to roll. Let's get rolling. Okay, our pasta sheet. Okay, Fill meanwhile, it. meanwhile, I'm gonna put some marinara sauce in the pan. This is our Gambardella's homemade marinara sauce. And we make it fresh every day just for you. You can always pick it up and make a pizza, pasta, whatever your favorite dish is. That looks great already. Okay. And it's ready to go in the oven. Okay. Perfect. So we get that foil. Yes. Oh, cheese on some. top. Okay. Mozzarella cheese on the top. In the oven it goes. Great. And bringing the comfort food to you. Hot out of the oven. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's beautiful. Want to see us see all our recipes at webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Gambardello's Pasta Bella. How would you like to go to a party and learn to paint? Monty Bowen tells you how that can be done in this week's edition of That's Interior Entertainment. It was a Christmas party. Here, line it up. Line it up uh, with this line, not the center there. It was a class. Teaching people how to paint step by step in a really fun environment where you can have food and drinks and music. She and her husband started hosting and teaching paint parties this past spring to raise money for their service trip to Cambodia. So after we raised our amount, we just kept getting requests to keep doing paint parties. So we decided to turn it into a business and, and continue helping others be creative. At this event, she demonstrated how to paint mountains and the aurora. So pretty similar technique, it's still dry brushing. She and her husband Patrick put the parties together. You show up, everything's ready for you. Get your apron, you have your um, station set up with an easel, your canvas, your brushes. It's something that we, uh, I was first introduced to in San Antonio when we moved there. Um, and something that we really enjoyed. And we kind of, we do a lot of artsy things together at home. You can get more information about the paint parties at funwithpigments.com. That's Interior Entertainment, brought to you by Midnight Sun Family Medicine.
Joe Cook is up with sports and he checks in with the Nanook hockey team before the opening Governor's Cup Series. Also, we start prep basketball team previews and more with Joe after the break. Hello Interior Alaska, Joe Cook here with your local Thursday sportscast. This could be the weekend the Alaska Nanooks get back on track in the WCHA. It's Gov Cup weekend. Alaska will travel to Anchorage for the first two games of the Governor's Cup. UAF won their sixth Gov Cup last season, but UAA is the hot team right now. They are six in the conference. And they swept number 17 Michigan Tech their last time out. Alaska is down, but not out. They are tied for last in the WCHA with a 2-8-2 record. And they are winless in their last seven games, and they are healing a bit from a physical Lakers series. UAF freshman Chad Staley, who's been finding the back of the net lately, will get a real feel for the Gov Cup in a must-win weekend for UAF. Yeah, I'm expecting it to be really intense. Uh, everyone's been talking about the rivalry, and obviously we've heard about how important the Gov Cup is to the school and how big of a rivalry it is. So I'm really excited to get my first taste of it, and I'm sure everyone's ready to go. You know, obviously we don't like those guys, and they don't like us. So it's a huge rivalry for Alaska. It's huge bragging rights for Alaska. But more importantly, there's two points or four points on the line this weekend, and we need to get those points this weekend. I think we just got to stick to what we need to do and what we need to do to succeed, and we'll worry about the rest. Fairbanks Ice Dogs continue their long road trek to end 2015. This weekend, they'll be in Pittston, Pennsylvania. It's the home of the Wilkes Bear Scratton Knights. The Knights are 9-13-4 and, and last in the East Division, but they are coming off a split with the Aston Rebels, who were the first team to sweep Fairbanks back in October. But Fairbanks has some hot dogs on their squad. Reiner Gorowski is the Midwest Star of the Week with six goals and two assists in the Kenai River Series. And goalie Gavin Naito was the second star of the week. He finished with 56 saves. A shutout and three wins against the Brown Bears. The Midwest Division leaders are 24 and 2. They will aim to keep pace with Wichita Falls, who lead Fairbanks by two points in the overall NAHL standings. The UAF men's basketball team will have their last games of 2015 at the Patty Center this weekend. The Nanooks will host Northwest Indian College Eagles for the 7 p.m. tip offs on Friday and Saturday night. Some storylines for these games Monroe product Christian Nickerson makes his return to Fairbanks the Eagles team as they look for the upset. Also, if UAF wins these two games, McDorham will reach 300 career wins. With both teams looking to build momentum going to the Christmas break, there's also something to play for on both sides. Right now, Durham is tinkering with lineups to shore up his 6-2 team that is 4-0 at home. We're still looking at different combinations, uh, you know, different guys in positions. I mean, we're 11, 12 games in the season, so the more games we can get, uh, you know, it, it's just going to help us. We got to focus on finding the right balance of being disciplined and taking risks and on offense executing, make sure everybody uh, can have a good game before break to get their confidence going up when they come back. The high school basketball season is just eight days away. Tonight we begin our team previews of the team that always seems to make it to the state tournament, but now they have a new head coach. Tonight we check in with the Lathrop boys basketball team. The Lathrop Malamutes entered their 2015-2016 campaign with a lot of goals. The senior class wants to get out of the first round of the state tournament and reclaim the MAC after losing the regional title for the first time in years to West Valley. They'll aim to do that under new head coach Matt Wilkin, who replaces Hall of Famer Milo Griffin. But Wilkin has been a part of the program for a long time. A lot of these kids I've been coaching or helping coach since they were in fourth grade, and uh, and so there's not a lot of transition as far as that goes. They know me, I know them, they know you know my pet peeves and what I expect of players. There's a lot of great things that Milo did when I played for him and, and through the years with me helping him. And it's just carrying on some of those things, giving it maybe my own particular touch um, and uh, my own spin on things, of course. The roster is all in the family. The Maiden brothers, Glenn and Garius, and the Wilkin boys, Evan and Mason, are veteran returners. Sharpshooter Jeremiah Handy will look to make an impact as he moves up from JV. Center Kobe Milk will make his debut later this season after suffering a back injury in the offseason. The floor general of this year's team, though, is all-conference point guard Gabriel Howard. We've been losing some players, some key players from last year, mostly the seniors, and then some transfers. So I want to keep this program moving and hopefully lead us to state again. 
Late that will start their season with the annual Silent Night game against Allison, a tribute to the late Joe Tremorello. The crowd stays silent until a team scores 10 points. Silent Night is something we look forward to, of course. It's like something unique and cool that we're pretty much the only one that does here. And uh, I mean, for us, it's a big deal to get the 10 points first. Lathrop and Allison tip off on December 18th, Friday night at 6 p.m. on Joe T. Court at Lathrop High School. Joe Cook reporting. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for watching. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into a Thursday evening edition of the Fairbanks TV News. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about the weather and we're talking about warmer temperatures on the horizon. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Nice photograph tonight seen by Karen Garrity. Look at the purples and the oranges and the yellows. A very beautiful sunset. And as always, if you have a photogra photograph to share, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. We're also looking for the... Uh, the Christmas photos too. And speaking of photos, once again, uh, looking at temperatures, as you can see our recent high today, well actually high 11 degrees below zero currently. The low last night 21 degrees below, 45 in the uh, 1940 time frame for the record high, 55 below and yes, 1935 once again. Sunrise and sunset, uh, four hours and three minutes, a loss of three minutes from today. Air quality index, Fairbanks, uh, once again stage one moderate. And North Pole Stage 2, unhealthy for sensitive groups. Keep that in mind. And our satellite and radar showing high pressure is still continuing to block all the moisture off to the west and the northwest. Uh, that's why it's not giving anything to the Fairbanks area. Things are clearing up over southeast Alaska. In fact, you can see the latest across uh, the southeastern sections. Chilly at Juneau, 27 degrees, but just cloudy skies. Cloudy skies in Anchorage, 20 degrees. Showers around the Kodiak region, also over the Cold Bay area. And up and down the west coast, a little warmer than it was yesterday, 8 degrees at Nome. And even warmer in Barrow, 7 degrees below zero there. Fort Below at North, uh, Fort Yukon. Lower 48 weather, another storm system moving ashore. This one is really bringing a lot of cold air with it. That's why that speckled look is the cold air moving across the warmer waters of the Pacific Ocean. And this one's moving all the way down to the south, so it looks like Southern California will be getting some rain. Once again, some wild weather going on across Minneapolis into the Great Lakes. But again, warm temperatures are the rule. And as far as uh, the record-breaking warmth, as I said last night, again, you can see the warm temperatures will continue across the Great Lakes into the northeast. No change expected there. 20 to 30 degrees warmer than it should be this time of year. On the jet stream, a big dip down to the south helping to uh, stir up the atmosphere and bring severe weather to uh, many areas across the deep south over the weekend with more rain and snow over the Pacific Northwest. Okay, time once again for our kids' weather. All this week we've been talking with the kids from Pearl Creek Elementary School, but tonight it's a teacher with an interesting weather fact. Hello, my name is Mr. Sassman, and this is my fourth grade class at Pearl Creek Elementary School. And we have a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know that the cleanest air on Earth is found at the South Pole? It's 10 times cleaner than at the North Pole. I have kids getting in the spirit already. Good job. Mount McKinley Bank, thank you for sponsoring our kids' weather. Next week we'll be passing along some more interesting weather facts because the kids will be enjoying their Christmas vacation toward the end of the week. All right. Here's what's going on as far as the forecast goes. In the northern sections, snow showers at Barrow, increasing clouds at Nome, mostly cloudy skies for Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, very quiet weather pattern, partly cloudy skies for Fairbanks, a few more clouds in the Healy region, maybe some lingering flurries at Delta Junction. Over southeast Alaska, pretty quiet too, just cloudy skies, a few ch a chance of a few snow showers at Juneau and cloudy skies at Ketchikan. Well, out to the southwest, it looks like for the most part, mixed showers for Cold Bay. Rain be mixing, maybe mixing with snow in Kodiak and a slight chance of snow for Bethel. And down around the Anchorage Bowl, looking at uh, becoming mostly cloudy in Anchorage with rain and snow likely at Homer and snow is likely for Valdez. And again, it's Thursday night, which means it's time for our road conditions brought to you by Mongold Insurance and uh, Jose Body and Paint and the Dalton Elliott Highways, icy spots, snowpack. Winds in the higher elevations once again, so be watching out for that. The same for the Steve Richardson highways, uh, blowing snow, icy patches on, and snow on the road, and the Parks Highway glazed road, icy spots, and some winds are still possible. And our forecast for the remainder of the night, another cold night with increasing clouds, 23 below for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast, 3 below for the high. Cloudy skies, not as cold temperatures as it was today. And the extended forecast, look at temperatures rising to the single digits to even the teens above zero by the rest of the five-day period there. No mention of any snow in the forecast.
forecast. Overnight lows will also be warming up, as you can see, dropping or rising to the single digits below zero by Monday and Tuesday. Okay, thank you, Mike. <clears throat> that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, a runaway train barreled through several stations in Boston before power was cut to it and helping it to stop. That's up next with Lester Holt. All right, a reminder to join our friend J.R. Lewis tomorrow morning for updates. Okay, from all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. Good night.